Good evening, everyone. So I have been teasing this for forever, but I have finally gotten my um, queen shenanigans, protector of justice and all things awesome and no shenanigans uh, outfit ready, along with the Sally Jesse Raphael glasses. I think it just brings it all together and the cleavage. Just saying. <laughs> Got a little warm out there. <laughs> I was like, oh, we're in spring now. Okay. You need to warn fluffy people. We are, we need a little bit of a transition between, you know, 40 degrees, 30 degrees, and 80 degrees. We're fluffy. We need a little bit of time to acclimate. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Wolfram, for doing all the mod things. Welcome back, Noel and Squaw Bob. I know, no zombies. I was just so sad. I mean, my cell phone didn't burn up. The dogs and cats didn't start living together in sin or marriage. Look, it's 2024. Y'all do what you want, dogs and cats. You know, I didn't even hear like weird backwards Latin from the omen. I was so upset. Welcome, Aunt, Auntie M. And well, hi, Squid Pro Quo. Linda Evers, welcome. Captain Kern, Janie J, <laughs> Stacy Schmidt. Let's see, AC's Wildflower, Slinky, Jackie, welcome. JK Debuck, welcome. Glad to have all of you here. Hopefully, all of your retinas are intact and you know everything is working for you. If your if your cat and dog exhibit a little bit more friendliness than normal, you know, I would say just just go with it. It's it's 2024 at this point. <laughs> uh, welcome, bearded man Steve. Awesome, awesome beard. I love it. Mr. Mo is working on growing a beard, but I never knew that there were so many products involved. Holy good lord, night. Uh, nice to see you, Shenanigan. And Salty Dog. Our first story is, well, I'm sure you guys were all wondering what was going to happen to Kang. But actor Jonathan Majors gets probation and avoids jail time for assaulting ex-girlfriend. The 34-year-old star of Creed 3 and other films had faced up to a year behind bars after he was convicted of misdemeanor assault by a Manhattan jury in December. Welcome, my mama. Actor Th Jonathan Majors will have to undergo a year-long counseling program, but avoided jail times when he was sentenced to probation on Monday for assaulting his ex-girlfriend in a high-profile case that derailed the once-promising star's career. The former Marvel franchise star had faced up to a year behind bars after he was convicted. Instead, the judge ruled that majors will be on probation, must pay a $250 fine, and undergo a 52-week in-person counseling program approved by Los Angeles County De Probation Department. Interesting. If majors is arrested at any time during his probation, he could be forced to spend a year in jail. He's also not able to possess, apply for, or own a firearm, as is typical with DV cases. As part of a ruling, a full order of protection will remain in place for his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari. Samples of D Major's DNA will also be taken as part of his sentence. Well, see, we can clone him, and then you can have Kang back, I'm sure, for Quantum Mania number 73. <laughs> no original characters. All strong women. The following, following the guilty verdicts, Major was immediately dropped by Marvel Studios, which had cast him as Kang the Conqueror, a role envisioned as the main villain in the entertainment, well, former Empire's movies and television shows for years to come. I'm sure you were all just so worried that you were going to have to watch, you know, Quantum Mania number 74 with Kang. The conviction stems from an altercation in March 2013. 23, in which Jabari accused him of attacking her in the backseat of a chauffeured car, saying he hit her head with his open hand, twisted her arm behind her back, and squeezed her middle finger until it fractured. 
Majors claimed that the 31-year-old British dancer was the aggressor flying into a jealous rage after reading a text message from another woman on his phone. He maintained he was only trying to regain his phone and escape Jabari safely. The jury ultimately convicted him of one assault charge and harassment violation, although acquitted him on a different assault charge and aggravated of aggravated harassment. Majors was originally slated to be sentenced in February, but his lawyer sought a dismissal of the conviction. A Manhattan judge denied the motion last week. Major had hoped that his two-week criminal trial would vindicate him and restore his status in Hollywood. You know, I'm guessing Hollywood will have him back for his grand, you know, redemption tour in just a little bit. I mean, really, like they're going to give him up. Disney has no ideas for the Marvel Universe. They will have him come back before they let Johnny Depp come back. Explain that to me. So one man is vindicated. He still hasn't gotten everything back. But this dude is probably going to have a redemption arc very soon. I am a little fatirritated. In a television interview shortly after his conviction, he said he deserves a second chance. Quote, as he eagerly anticipates closing this chapter, he looks forward to redirecting his time and energy fully towards his family and his art, Major's lawyer said in a statement last week after losing their bid to have the conviction tossed out. But the 34-year-old California native and Yale University graduate still faces other legal hurdles. Last month, Jabari filed a civil suit in a Manhattan federal court accusing the actor of assault, battery, defamation, and inflicting emotional distress. Ma'am, seriously. She claims Major subjected her to escalating incidents of physical and verbal abuse during their relationship, which lasted from 2021 to 2023. Here's my problem with this, and maybe I'm a little bitter, maybe I have a little bit of a, a block here on this, and I could totally be speaking from a trauma response or something, whatever my therapist was say, any hoozle. If this gentleman didn't have any money, would she be going for a civil case? I don't know, and I don't think so. The problem is, is there are a lot of women who have had to deal with bullcrap partners. You know what I mean? And being one of them, I could have taken him to civil court, but what was I going to get? Nada. So I, I just, I feel a little bit, I don't know, kind of like we're beating a dead horse here. Like this is just a money grab and it seems icky to me. But like I say, this is my personal lens and that is okay. <laughs> it's just a wig, um, Tammy. It's a terrible um, Queen Serenity Sailor Moon wig that I will have to re redo because it is just it is just not working for me right now. Yes, Queen. Well, see, I was I do have Sailor Moon and I do have her tiara now, so watch out. But I was like, hmm, would I want to be a sailor or would I want would I want to be a scout or a queen? And I decided queens get to judge people a lot more and get a scepter and there may or may not be like a really expensive scepter that I want. And if I have to buy it for my, um, for my, uh, you know, show, then, um, you know, it's kind of a tax deduction, which is um, <laughs> ridiculous and not something I should be focusing on, but, you know, it's a dual purpose thing. <laughs> Back to the thing. And uh, no, I am sorry you're having a, a hard experience. I try. I will be um, very real with you guys here. Let me switch to big screen. I know that there is some stuff going on between different creators. I know that. And I respect everyone who is a content creator but honest to goodness, you guys, my health, my leg doesn't do drama. So 
I respect both people and I hope that it, they can work together, work this out and come to a conclusion that doesn't end up being terrible. They're both adults. I respect them and I hope that they do come to a conclusion, but it's not my job to get in the middle of that. And I can't, um, health wise, I can't get into drama. So I would like to say that this is a drama free channel. I don't do it. I feel free to have all of your opinions. I just, I won't, I won't get into it. I'm not going to um, do that kind of thing, just honestly, because I'm, I'm kind of, I kind of can't handle that stuff. But that's just me. It's just, just a general blanket, no drama, llama stuff in the chat. That's just all I am saying as a preemptive thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is smexy time. I even brought out cleavage. See, I'm trying this whole thing where I I have been covering up a lot lately. So I'm trying to, um, again, be comfortable with, you know. Oh, no problem. No, look, if you need to vent, that's fine. <laughs> that is totally fine. I understand. I, I don't deal with rude people either. That's why I figured I'd just be preemptive. <laughs> Any hoozle. Let's get back to the doodles. Okay. I just, that's my only opinion on this particular article is that, you know, I feel like I feel a little icky about getting money for an experience that is terrible. I, I don't know. It's something about it, especially when the person has a lot of assets and it kind of seems like maybe a cash grab. Again, I'm not denying anything that she said may have happened. If he did all these things, he is a total butt monkey. I just hate that, you know, some people get away with things and then when there's a big amount of money, involved sometimes it can get i don't know dingleberry-ish who knows in uh mother of the year and uh ma'am preemptively as a woman mother queen shenanigans in the name of justice, you have been excommunicated from the mom club, from the woman club. You are now simply a female who had, who incubated a child because what the actual hell, ma'am. A missing George, Georgia girl, seven, found in Puerto Rico, mom charged with custodial interference. A missing Georgia girl has been found in Puerto Rico more than a week after she was allegedly snatched by her mother who did not have custodial rights. Stella Brenda Brennan Salter had been missing since March 29th when she and her mom, children's book author Wendy Salter, for, er, 46, were last seen in Metter, about 65 miles from Savannah. They were both found about noon Saturday at a store in Puerto Rico, according to FBI office in Atlanta. The mom faces up to five years behind bars after she was charged with interstate interference with child custody. Uh, WJCL reported the child has been reunited with her dad who has legal custody. Okay, ma'am. I have questions. What the hell did you do? to lose custody of your child because normally courts are way, way for females. I see you have the, the chesticles. I have chesticles. I, I, I don't understand. I want to dig into this story because I want to understand how you didn't have custody. Were you like Shanda Vanda Ark and you had done some really shady crap and that's why, you know, hmm. You couldn't have your daughter, and then you decided, no, I know best, and I should really screw up my kid's life and make her fear for her safety and change her routine and put myself first and steal her. In the names of shenanigans and, star and snark, I declare you a dingus and kind of a twat waffle, okay? 
allegedly because all people are innocent until proven guilty, but she kind of did have the child said child in Puerto Rico. So I'm pretty sure I, I followed um, AOC to figure out how to say it like that. Puerto Rico. Anywho. All of the squirrels are going right now. <laughs> you guys. Um, but still. I'm, I'm going to need you to explain how your selfishness, you putting yourself first, uh, really, really is important for the child, Miss Child author with the, um, you know, that is at least bronze level on resting Karen face. So you are in third place, ma'am. I have a couple people in front of you, but I would definitely say you are asking for a regional manager. I say yes. The Lyons Police Department and FBI were expected to extradite Salter to Toombs County, where she is expected to appear on court Thursday. Salter is uh, listed on Amazon as a longtime school counselor and children's book author. Quote, a wife and mother of two daughters. Wendy is from a long line of farmers, and she and her family live on a farm that's been in her family for five generations. Huh. Okay. Wendy has been a member of the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators since 2012, it adds. Suddenly feeling okay with letting my boys read Captain Underpants, okay? <laughs> and Tammy, thank, I'm so glad that you got your blood work back and it came up clean. So awesome possum. Way to go. Thank you, Captain Kern. I will look at it in a minute because if I look at it now, I swear I don't even have ducks in a row. I have squirrels. And if you have ever seen Over the Hedge, which is a great movie, great movie, when Hammy drinks like the the energy drink, that's kind of, kind of <laughs> how I feel today. I don't know if it was the eclipse or whatever, but I'm just like, squirrel. It's just terrible. It is terrible. Um, and yet another glorious show for Boeing and Southwest. Terrifying video shows engine of Southwest airline Boeing 737 ripping apart during takeoff. Um, I thought y'all were going to look at all this stuff because Boeing was in the, the shenanigans. I, I really thought that... Um, all of this was being looked at because I was hoping, I don't know why, but I was kind of hoping that it was a big deal if, you know, airplanes start falling apart all the time. I, Stacy Smith, Schmidt, sorry, I will English myself one day, but holy gap, Stacy Schmidt, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, this is why I'm never flying again unless I fly my own plane and I check my own stuff and all that other stuff. Because if, you know, I may have a little bit of a control problem. So, uh, you know, I'll be okay if I trust, I trust me to make sure that my, my plane has all the, the, you know, bolts in it and such. I don't, think I trust Southwest anymore. Passengers on a Houston-bound Southwest Airlines flight watched in horror Sunday as the engine on the Boeing 737-800 appeared to come apart mid-flight. The flight immediately returned to Denver after crew members noticed a removable metal or sheet of metal covering one of the plane's engines shearing off during takeoff. Dear Lord, a terrifying video posted on X by ABC's chief, chief transportation reporter, Sam Sweeney. Uh, the metal engine cover can be seen whipping in the breeze like paper as it tore loose. You know, someone's going to end up with an engine in their backyard and or a Joe Dirt, well, turd meteor, turd, turdler, because airplanes i'm gonna need y'all to stop in a statement the federal aviation administration said another one no i guess he did 
said that a part of the aircraft called a engine cowling had detached and struck one of the plane's wing flaps. Reached by email, a Southwest spokesperson told the Post the, in, in the, the incident was a result of, quote, a mechanical issue. Well, that's comforting. I mean, it's not like we need an engine to fly. We'll just go on prayer. We're strong in our faith. Giblets. They're going to have us start using, um, oh gosh, Peloton bikes to, to power the planes at this point. What in the heck? I feel more confident in Radio Flyer. That bike put together by two, you know, little kids with like duct tape, hope, and imagination than I feel with Boeing at this point. <laughs> yeah, well, he didn't realize he was going to be in charge of all transportation. He thought just trains. Okay. I'm a terrible person. I'm going straight to Hades for that one. Uh, re okay, what is it? Southwest Flight 3695 returned to Denver International Airport this morning and landed safely after experiencing a mechanical issue. Our customers will arrive at Houston Hobie on a different or hobby on a different aircraft approximately three hours behind schedule, a Southwest spokesperson told the Post. We apologize for any inconvenience or for their delay, but place our highest priority on the ultimate safely, safety of our customers. Ma'am, at this point, your entire airline or aircraft line uh, could be a great, well, product placement for gremlins that or that um, Twilight episode where only Captain Kirk could see the little gremlin tearing the plane apart. I mean... At this point, I would just go with it. I mean, put your planes in Twister in every single, you know, Godzilla movie from this point on. Because I'm telling you what, I don't generally drink in public because I don't like to be out of control. But Mo would be drinking like all of the drinks if I was on that freaking air airplane thing. And then I'd have to rent a hotel room, sober up and then take a rental car. I am not joking. I, I have seen Final Effing Destination. <laughs> this was a test. You are getting out of you're getting out alive. For God's sakes, don't drive behind a lumber truck. Swear to goodness. <laughs> Those things still freak me out. We have and we have lumber yards kind of close to us. But I swear to goodness, even now that movie traumatized me. I see one of them and I am like other lane muchachos. We are we are not even staying behind that. Okay. After we've gotten off on tangent what Mo fears the most, lumber trucks. <laughs> uh let's see here. The plane returned to Denver just 25 minutes later, touching down at 8.14 a.m. before being towed to the gate. The FAA is currently investigating the incident. A Boeing spokesperson directed the Post's inquiries to Southwest. Today's mishap continues an unsettling string of safety issues that have dogged aerospace giant through 24 or 2024, and it comes less than two weeks after CEO Dave Calhoun announced that he will step down from his post at the end of the year. Have a lovely evening, M NTM. I hope you had a, well, a great day. <laughs> yeah, he'll step down with a golden parachute. Uh, let's see. On January 5th, so we all know about the blowout and everything. It's just for the love of all that is Cheetos, FAA, I know you were wanting. Okay, so you guys know I am a C a C SPAN nerd. Any hoozle, the FAA was trying to, well, the, the current administration, and I know I don't generally get political, but if you want to watch something funny, uh, it is. 
amazingly hilarious to watch this gentleman be put forth as the head of the FAA, and he's never been a pilot. He has no airport, you know, management, no sort of experience whatsoever. He's just read the manual. And it's, it's, um, well, if you ever want to know why you should be self-sufficient, uh, I think s partially, I mean, he had, he had a lot of good qualifications for a different job. I mean, he had served, I think as a veteran, the problem was he had no aviation experience and you would think that you would have someone with aviation experience. So if you want to watch something funny on C-SPAN, it was kind of hilarious. Now, in things that I need to do but probably would never be able to, an Illinois man does 26,100 squats in 24 hours to break the world record. I do 26 squats and be like, that's my record. If y'all have ever been part of a workout class, uh, there is a Moby song called Sally, and you do squats to that song. You're like, I, I, I'm just done. That's okay. When I wake up in the morning, I'm just going to fall on my face, and then my legs will never hurt because I'll just slide off my bed onto my face and crawl. <laughs> but it is a good song, and we should probably all move a little more unless you are doing awesome on your health stuff. So, you know, then you just be, just keep being awesome. <laughs> Tony uh, Piriano of Decatur aimed to break the world or the record of 25,000 squats in 24 hours, which was said by a Rhode Island man, Joe uh, Reverdez in 2020. Periano surpassed Riverdez total as well as his own goal of six or 26,000 squats, but the video of his attempt, attempt must still be reviewed by Guinness World Records for his official certification. He started his squats at 5 a.m. Thursday and ended his attempt at, at 5 a.m. Friday. He took 30 minute or 30 second breaks after each set of 22 squats with some longer breaks peppered in to make sure he had energy for the long haul. Yes, we need to send this to Megan. <laughs> because she's got squat time every hour. <laughs> the record at attempt raised money for the Marion County Horizon Center of Decatur and Mount Zion, which provides housing, employment opportunities, and other resources for adults with developmental disabilities. Oh, he's got a good form on his squat and he's raising money. I do have brother husband applications out, but you would not have seniority, sir. So I'm just saying. <laughs> in awesome news, a declaration in Mexico gives 19 cats roaming the presidential palace food and care forever. Aw, I love it when cats get everything they want, like the sociopaths they are. <laughs> they prowl through the palace garden, st stalking pigeons and making cameos on televised press briefings. Some greet tourists by doors, and others take a sneaky lick of ice cream from the staff. Nineteen feral cats have free reign of Mexico's National Palace. Long roaming the lush gardens and historical colonial halls of the most iconic buildings in the country. They have access to every part of the palace, so they walk in on meetings, interviews, and wander into camera. Said Jesus Arias, the palace veterinarian, has a handful of feline friends brush against his ankles. Now the palace cats have made history after the government of the Mexican president Andreas Manuel López Obrador declared them to be, quote, living fixed assets, end quote, the first animals in Mexico to receive this title. The investment turned or the investment term, quote, fixed assets, end quote, usually applies to buildings and furniture, 
But by applying it to CADS, Lopez Obrador's government has obligated the country's treasury to give them food and care for them for the rest of their lives, even after their leader leaves the office in October. Quote, the cats are now the symbol of the National Palace. At just as we understand this world, I wouldn't understand the National Palace without the presence of these cats, said Adriana Castillo Roman, general director of the National Palace and Cultural Heritage Conserv Conservancy. We have to make sure the cats are taken care of. Nestled in the heart of Mexico City, the Presidential Palace has long been the seat of Mexico's executive branch. Now the resident of Lopez Obrador, it is built upon the former palace of indigenous Emperor Montezuma. Ironically, Montezuma's ancient Aztec culture honored not cats, but hairless dogs known as, well... Whatever this word is, that would be culturally insensitive if I don't know how to say it. And those are a lot of letters that don't look like they go together. <laughs> and I know that it's pronounced chick for I, but that is a whole level of languageology I do not know. <laughs> Who were even buried with their masters. Uh, but these days... Lopez Obrador is accompanied by Bowie, Beloff, Noob, Coco, Yama, Olin, Balam, and more, who seem to have found a perfect home in the building. Lopez Obrador himself says the cats dominate the palace and often walk in front of him during official ceremonies. Can we get some can we get some presidential cats? I mean, I'm sure they'll probably bite or scratch or give someone rabies, but if I was president, I would have all the presidential cats and my first executive order would be that the presidential cats are awesome that would be my first and only executive order if unless people don't work with me to make america awesome again i'm just kidding <laughs> that way you, i just can take other things and be like no that's totally my my motto too <laughs> oh for the love of goofusness. Uh, some are named after artists like the orange tabby named Bowie after famous rock star David Bowie, who visited the palace in 1997 to see the famous mural by Mexican painter Diego Rivera. Other art others are named for native rocks or words in the region's Aztec language, like Olin, which means movement. Staff say they remember the feral cats living among the cactus and dense brush of the gardens as far back as 50 years ago. But it's unclear when they first appeared or how they even got into the building. While 19 live in the building full time, many more come and go. And the sa staff suspect they slip under a small crack in the palace gate by night. One cat named Zeus, who has since passed away, even became famous in July when he meandered into the president's morning breakfast press briefing the cray cat stood in front of the cameras and wandered among reporters until palace staff had to carry him off to avoid a catastrophe castillo said that the government had to ask reporters to stop feeding zeus because he would spend his days accepting treats from different people around the palace and was getting really fat zeus by the powers invested in me by all the fluffy people of america and the greater well, just Americanness and the fluffiness. You are living the dream, sir. And I hope you 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 passed just chonky and happy, sir. Rest in peace, Zeus, because holy, holy fazolis. Would that be my life if I was a cat? I'd be like, no, I I had what a treat. I've never heard of that. And then I'd go to the next person, a treat? They never feed me here. Oh, I would be a terribly dramatic and totally fat cat. You have no idea, guys. I, I have planned this out in my, you know, if reincarnation happens, these are the animals I would go with map because I was a weird child <laughs> and an even weirder adult. Any hoozle. When Lopez Obrador first took office in 2018, Castillo said the palace pets were being fed quietly by employees. 
Some employees, like the cats, would bring them leftovers from home and once in a while canned food or rice and soup, Castillo said. Palace staff worked with vets from the National Anonymous Autonomous University of Mexico to vaccinate, sterilize, and chip the cats and build them little cat homes and feeding stations around the garden. They also hired Arias to take care of them on a permanent basis and give them a good life. Neither Bowie, Coco, or Olin commented when they asked how they feel about being, quote, fixed or living fixed assets. Coco swished his tail while Olin stretched out below a palace pillar and fell asleep. Meow responded Noob, a gray cat named after the Spanish word for cloud, who also enjoys greeting visitors at the door of the palace. This is awesome. Like I said, totally would have all of the the White House cats. <laughs> Big old just all the fat cats. Um, in kind of Godoy, as as a part of the the um headline contractor who died after walking into propeller lost situational awareness. She walked into a propeller and and I feel terrible about the family, but I yes. I mean, I think that's the understatement of the world. She, situational awareness, and then there's walking into a propeller. I, and I feel terrible. I don't understand how this happened. I hope that they can maybe see why this did happen and hopefully prevent it from happening to anyone else. Stephanie R. Cosme, or Cosme, a 32-year-old test engineer, quote, inadvertently, end quote, walked into the propeller of a parked aircraft in California and later died. I mean, it just sounds a little wonky. I don't know. I'd put my tinfoil hat on, but it wouldn't fit over the wig. This wig is massive. A civilian contractor lost, quote, situation awareness, end quote, when she was fatally struck by an aircraft's propeller last year in California, according to the Air Force. Stephanie R. Cosme, 32, a test engineer, was critically injured after she inadvertently walked into the propeller of a parked MQ-9A at Gray Butte Airfield during a Ground developmental test on September 7th, 2023, the Air Force said in an accident report released Friday, April the 5th. She died shortly after uh, she was being transported to the Antelope Valley Hospital in Lancaster. Cosme was an employee of Samara Systems LLC, which provided test support services for the Air Force Light Cycle Management Center, Detachment 3, the service branch added. The report cited two causes for the mishap. Cosme, quote, was incorrectly instructed tra or trained on how to take the telemetry readings from the loaded weapons on the MQ-9A aircraft while engines were running, and additionally, she lost situational awareness taking telemetry readings. According to the report, Cosme was looking down at her test de testing device the whole time. Crew chief and others tried to get her attention by shouting and waving their arms. Quote, without looking up to determine her position relative to the aircraft, Cosme proceeded to walk directly into the propeller of the aircraft, sustaining fatal injuries, said the report. Ew. Oh. Oh. Okay. God bless the first responders that have to deal with these catastrophic things. I mean, that gives me the the whole body shiver like you've just got an ice cube down your back. Um so God bless those people that go in and deal with these horrific situations and try to help these people because I'm going to tell you Auntie Mo would be passed out i don't do blood well so like i said bless these people because oh my gosh
The agency report also pointed out, quote, a clear lack of communication among the test team and ground support personnel, as well as rushed tests conducted on September 7th due to prior delays and cancellations as factors leading to the incident. Uh, the Air Force said in its release at the time of the incident, Samara Systems was doing test support to, quote, evaluate electromagnetic interference, electromagnetic compatibility testing with a new release of MQ-9A software on payloads and other aircraft system. According to her obituary, Kazume was born in Fontana, or Fontana uh, California, and grew up in Palmdale. She is survived by her parents, her brother and sister, and her fiancé and stepdaughter. And you know what? I hope that everyone is still just supporting and loving on this family because I can't imagine the heartbreak. You send your, you know, she's got a fiancé, she had a stepdaughter, she had parents and a brother and sister. So I really do hope that, you know, they work on training people better because this shouldn't have happened if she had maybe known how dangerous it was, or maybe they just didn't have that kind of training going on, but it just, it's really sad. Quote, through her life, Stephanie touched the hearts of everyone she encountered with her warmth, kindness, and unwavering love. The obituary said she had an innate ability ability to make those around her feel special and valued her capacity to love and care for others knew no bounds her gentle spirit and radiant smile brought comfort and joy to all who had a privilege of knowing her the loss of stephanie leaves an irreplaceable void in our lives but her spirit will live on in the hearts of all of who were fortunate enough to know her the tribute continued that is so that is a lovely sentiment but um, on a total tangent, you guys, because I've just been tangenty all day, I think it's a kind of a blip day because, you know, it was the eclipse. So everyone's just giving everyone a bit of a, a bit of grace. But I, always, I often wonder if they're what my obituary would say, like, well, she was a deeply silly person, but she tried to be OK. Like she's I hope she's in purgatory somewhere because that's where she said she was aiming she often quoted herself as being the world's worst Christian. <laughs> she made up a lot of weird sayings. We will repeat them now. <laughs> and after that, uh, we would like, she would left a list of people who were douches and we, she would like us to read them with, you know, an upturned middle finger on both hands, double deuces. These are the list of people she thought were douches. And <laughs> uh. Oh, no, it's it. I say I'm the world's worst Christian just because I don't I I think everyone has their own struggles. So I try not to judge anyone. So I'm like, look, I go to Steve Gosney if you want really good help. I make fun of too many people. <laughs> He's the best Christian. I'm the worst. <laughs> pretty much. It's pretty much going to be like a true grit scene where I'm trying to get the, um, <laughs> get the mouse and something terrible happens. <laughs> oh, good night, nurse. Let's see. Uh, in things that would happen to me because, oh my goodness, they would happen to me. Mm -hmm. They got an octopus for their son to raise as a pet. Then it had 50 babies. Because, you know, I would get the most fertile octopus ever. And then we'd have octopi. Uh, what do you call a group of octopuses? A troop of, of a squiggle? a tentacle of octopi, octopi because I know a kaleidoscope is a group of um, butterflies and a murder is a group of crows. But what do you call a group of um, a herd of octopi? A pod. Good deal. <laughs> 
An Oklahoma family has to come to grips with its re new reality after acquiring, <clears throat> excuse me, an octopus to raise as a pet, only for her to suddenly produce a small army of hatchlings. In case it wasn't already obvious, octopuses are not common pets, Octodad. Octodad Cameron Clifford of Oklahoma City posted to TikTok last week. In fact, octopuses are not very common in Oklahoma in any capacity. That is until now, Clifford got an adult female California two spot octopus for his older son in October. Terrence laid um, 50 eggs in December that started hatching in February. So Terrence might be a girl. <laughs> Uh, Clifford has been documenting the unusual occurrence on TikTok at at doc or D octopus. Look at this place. I'm sure if you put octopus in TikTok, you won't end up with terrible things. <laughs> Octopods. They're octonauts. Uh, telling the post that the amount of people invested is more than I would have thought. Surprising my son with an aquarium so he can fulfill a lifelong dream of owning a pet octopus began a post March that captivated TikTok with 3.6 million views. The octopus arrived in a plastic bag of water packed with styrofoam in a brown cardboard box. The family showed the challenges of setting up a home for Terrence, but revealed, uh, in her quickly growing accustomed or reveled in her quickly growing accustomed to her new tank. Even with serious planning, consulting, and forethought, we were still faced with surprises when we received Terrence, including her size. Clifford wrote last month, We don't take this responsibility lightly. They are extremely complex and intelligent creatures. We love you, Terry. Two months after welcoming Terrence, she laid a clutch of eggs, signaling the end of her life was near. Oh, no. Dang it. Uh, octopus, uh, or so, or by Mac for short, has a natural lifespan of 12 to 18 months. After a female lays her eggs, she stops eating as she watches over her offspring. She eventually wastes away and passes away. In a March 20. Sixth update, Clifford said that they were told to expect her to pass away within four to eight weeks. Instead, she has thrived and so has her progeny, much to everyone's surprise. Oh, look at it. It's a baby octopus. Okay, I need six. <laughs> oh my gosh. They'd always say consistent or we have always stayed in constant contact with our BIMAC experts, one of them which had cared for dozens of BIMACs through the years, and none of them had ever laid fertile eggs, the family explained in a clip early last week. Even educational and research facilities struggle with hatching them in captivity, but this occurred three weeks free away from my son's bed in central Oklahoma. We found the true natural habitat of, of cephalopods, Oklahoma. <laughs> the cephalopods will become sentient and attack and gain sapience and then attack us for Oklahoma. Y'all realize this. They've started plotting. This is the start of a very terrible movie. <laughs> so the Clifford family welcomed Pearl, Melina, uh, JC, Seance, and Rocket Larry and others to the mix. Clifford told the Post at one point they were able to keep 50 hatchlings alive for about a week. Unfortunately, we're not able to save all of them, Clifford told the Post in an email. Those that deal with this species regularly in a controlled environment only yield about 5% of the brood. Clifford said he only knows of one other octopus in Oklahoma. The Oklahoma Aquarium boasts a giant Pacific octopus, so finding caretakers has been tough. He said he reached out to every aquarium, biology department, pet store in a hundred mile radius, but each has declined politely to raise the babies. Sir, 
you made a promise. You're going to have to keep the babies. You're an octopus baby dad, and you have like 700 children now. <laughs> In a Sunday post, the family shared that the hatchlings are staying with a local reptile scientist known affectionately as Dr. Tim. Terrence is sticking with them, and she is still being fed by hand for now. The Cliffords have other obstacles they are facing. They revealed that a water filter installed for Terrence leaked for months and now our house is getting ripped apart. They are also preparing to nurture any remaining hatchlings but are begging aquariums to contact them. I would love to use this momentum to get these hatchlings into professional care as Tim and I are certainly not experts, Clifford told the Post. In the meantime, they've set up a Venmo to help pay for octopus care. If at this point you're still considering getting an octopus, maybe first adopt a honey badger and see how it goes, the family joked to its 362,200 TikTok followers. So that was pretty funny. I would be, I would be so stoked if we got an octopus. I would name it Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> um, and only San Francisco and it's killed it. Oh, okay. Only in San Francisco. And perhaps you can have poo week where you just clean the piles up. <laughs> San Francisco celebrates devil's lettuce week to promote, uh, well, devil lettuce, you know, culture. Are we going to have a bunch of people just in Rasta wear with dreadlocks and possibly smelling a bit off? A bit like skunk? San Francisco will be hosting its first ever Weed Week this year, a celebration aimed at embracing devil's lettuce culture in the city. After the city canceled its annual 420 event at Golden Gate Park. Scheduled to commence on April 13th and extend through April 20th. Okay, y'all, I'm not trying to be a pain in the in the behind, okay? And I, I definitely would never pass judgment on San Francisco. But what day is not freaking, you know, non-legal street pharmaceutical celebration day? in San Francisco. Like what day is sober day that we would have to, I don't know, celebrate the devil's lettuce for a week. I mean, I'm pretty sure that your city is synonymous with every single, you know, non-legal street pharmaceutical. I could be wrong though. I mean, I've never been there. So I will not pass judgment till I go. And until you work on the poo problem, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm okay to not go. <laughs> well, I know, I know some people live in California and, you know, doggone it, it's a big, there's a couple big problems and, you know, it's just where you live. Okay, let's see. Also known as 420, an informal holiday for those that love the lettuce, the event promises a week-long extravaganza dedicated to all things, well, green and leafed, if you will. Y'all, I'm not saying that I, I will be going to this, but look. I will say CBD oil is probably the only thing that helps with my pain. So I'm, I'm not against the devil's lettuce and yeah. Um, San Francisco weed week is like San Francisco beer week only for weed. Gosh, the, the organizers of these events are the poet laureates of our generation. Seriously, you're supposed to be selling this, but I, okay. <laughs> it features all of the producers and new flowers in seven licensed lounges and stores over seven nights, the organizers of the event wrote. Right next to them will be all the food trucks that you need. I'm just saying. <laughs> the city typically hosts an official 420 event at the Golden Gate or Golden Gate Park, where the enthusiasts can gather at Hippie Hill in the park to partake in 
you know, their lettuce rituals, if you will, on April 20th. However, due to lack of funding and budget cuts, the event was canceled. The humanity. <laughs> the humanity. How will San Francisco survive? We have no idea. Uh, despite the cancellation of the official event put on by the city each year, San Francisco Mayor London Breed emphasized that the spirit of 420 remains alive through grassroots efforts of organizers who created Weed Week. Civil rights are solved. We have figured out all problems apparently in San Francisco. We have banded together and the final, you know, injustice of the world that 420 day was canceled has now been fixed. We are, we are golden. Really, y'all? Quote, the event is canceled, but 420 is an organic event that came together not because the city said so, but because the community makes it happen as long as we can do it safely, Breed said. Uh, lettuce growers are rock stars and strains are celebrities. We want to give these strain releases the same rock star treatment that an album release gets. Madam. Miss. Sweetie. I'm going to need you to come to the front of the congregation slash classroom and, and explainerate yourself. Because you know what? San Francisco has a fair few problems. And I don't know if, you know, making rock stars out of different strain of lettuce production is, you know, the best thing you can do. Since California legalized recreational cannabis use in 2016, the industry has seen significant growth. You don't say. My shock. <laughs> Mayor Breed highlighted that cannabis sector is projected to contribute a substantial $789 million to California's economy between 2024 and 2025, according to KTVU. Well, there you go. I don't know why. You would think if they've got, you know, all those gajillion dollars from the old lettuce factory that they would be 420-ing themselves to get rid of all the poo. I mean, you think people would be just so happy and, well, hungry that they would, you know, not worry about everything and not protest everything. I don't know. Call me crazy. Our last story are things that were left behind in Spanish taxis. I don't know why this is a story, but apparently there is what looks like a gimp mask. We've got a, a fencing thingamabob dealy. And this, why is this a story? We shall all find out. <laughs> A taxi app in Spain is attempting to reunite passengers with lost and found items. Okay. Including a fencing foil and a mask. Uh, Pire Taxi, the, or Taxi, the primary taxi booking app in Granada, said on social media that the items that to end up in its lost and found during the past month include a sporting sword and a mask used to protect the faces of fencers. Oh, okay. Well, I guess it's not a gimp mask. I apologize. Apparently it's a fencing mask. I got too excited about weird kinky stuff people were leaving behind in the back of taxis. But no, it's never anything fun. I mean, the fencing sword's pretty fun. Y'all, swear to goodness, I would be in the office playing around with that. And then when people asked, have you found a fencing sword? I'd be sorely tempted to say no. Like, it's mine now. <laughs> the company said other items awaiting reuni her reunions with passengers include three pairs of prescription eyeglasses, five pair of sunglasses, three cell phones, five sets of keys, two wallets, two umbrellas, a hat, a book, two document folders, and a watch. Other items include gloves, jackets, a wool scarf, a vaping device. 
Yes. Hello. Hi. Um, I have a couple things that I'm missing. Uh, first thing, vaping device. Uh, the second thing, my my sword and my mask. <laughs> Who is going to drive all the way back to Granada to get um, their vaping device? Uh, three pieces of cutlery, a bag filled with medicine, lip balm, and a lipstick. Unless that lipstick is like from Sephora and you paid $30 for it, leave it behind. <laughs> The company said anyone who recognizes their lost property should contact the Granada Par Department of Police. Oh, for the love of all that is holy, Fazolis. I thought that this was going to be a fun thing. Anywho, I am sending you guys over to Shizzy. We are going to watch, I think, um, more of the Theodore Edgecombe trial tonight. And I am here for it. I'm probably also going to take this wig off because, to be honest, it's a little bit warm. Again, as I said, us fluffy people need a little bit of time to kind of get, to get used to it becoming spring and summer. We pretend it doesn't happen because we are okay with the cold. We are we are insulated, and I can wear another sweater. It's just this hot thing I don't do. Any hoozle. I will check my, oh, let me check my DM. Check my DM. <laughs> oh, goodness. I can't do a song right now, you guys. I am way too squirrel. I will, I will watch it and look um, tomorrow because if I get, y'all, it has been squirrels all day. Mr. Mo is like, are you even here? And I am like, Possibly, possibly not. I had to use all my brain power for our financial like advisor talk, and then I was done. I was like, I'm done. I'm done smarting. My brainy bits are closed for business. Any hoozle, I will see you all in the morning. It will be great. Have a wonderful evening if I don't see you again at Chizzy's, and I will see you all in the morning. Bye, guys. <laughs>